is Emily from Grammy's Garden. I talked in my last video when I was doing homemade pizza that I was kind of through for making sweets for the holidays. And I went through a Starbucks yesterday and got a coffee in a larger town near me. And their Cranberry Bliss bars were there. I haven't had one this year. Anyway, I thought I've got everything I need to make Cranberry Bliss bars, so I'm going to make them. So here we go. This is their knockoff. This is a knockoff of the Starbucks Cranberry Bliss Bars. They're enjoyable, whether it's Christmas or after Christmas. So we're gonna have some. So I'm gonna start out with the dry ingredients. And I've got my recipe right here. I've not made these in about probably three years. So in this bowl, I'm putting the dry ingredients, which that was two cups of flour. Now I'm gonna put in a fourth cup of flour. So two and a fourth cups flour. I'm gonna put this here just in case I need it. The next thing is one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. So one teaspoon, one teaspoon of baking powder, and then I'm gonna do a half. These look like tiny little spoons, but they work right. They just don't look as big as my big, clunkier set I have. Okay, there's that. A quarter teaspoon of salt. To me, that's almost a pinch, but for the sake of you all making this, I'm gonna go ahead and do it like I need to do it, so. I'm kind of like a cook that does some of this and some of that, but with baking, it's more of a science than if you're doing a home-cooked meal and it's harder, I think to get the results if you don't follow it exactly. So, a fourth teaspoon of salt. That's a fourth teaspoon. And then, an eighth teaspoon of cinnamon. That's not very much cinnamon. Eighth of a teaspoon. And this is um, ground cinnamon. They don't have, if you've eaten these before, the Bliss Bars, they don't have a real cinnamony taste. They have more of a citrus taste because there's gonna be some, um, there's cranberries in it, there's gonna be some orange. Instead of using the orange extract, I use the either orange juice, fresh orange juice that I have, or I will, and I will also grate and use some of the grated rind. So we have that. I don't think there's any other dry things. I'm just gonna whisk this together to be sure it's all combined well. Set it aside, and I've got some butter melting over here to start the brown sugar, eggs, and butter part. So I wanna be sure this is all whisked together well. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna set that aside. And for the next step, I have the three, three fourths cup of melted butter. And that was three fourths cup of the sticks. You know, it was, I didn't use three fourths cup of just of like liquid. There's that. Then one and a half cups of packed brown sugar. I'm gonna fold this up so I don't get brown sugar all over it. One and a half cup. I hope you all are enjoying your new year so far. It's kind of going in a, in a whirl for me already. Last year passed really fast and it seems like this year's really off to the races, I'll tell you that. Um, just lots of stuff going on for people. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this down and then come in on the top of it. If you've never watched my way that I have to use green tomatoes at the end of the year where I actually make a mock apple crisp or apple pie and make it, it tastes just like an apple pie and it's with green tomatoes. But if you wanna watch that when I do talk about, sometimes I make my own brown sugar I don't always do that. I buy the bags. 
and um, but you can make your own brown sugar by using like for a cup of white cane sugar or just regular sugar that you get at the store for a cup of that you add in a teaspoon or so of molasses and then you just blend it well in your mixer I've done it even with a fork inside a bowl and done it that way if you want it to be a darker one you know, like a dark brown sugar then you just add some more molasses and you just do it as you want but that's one thing if you start to cook a recipe at home and you don't have brown sugar there's a way to do it so I want to follow this exactly don't want to mess up because I want some of these I looked at him yesterday and I wanted one so I thought I'll make them tomorrow I'll take this off it's in my way Let's see if I can get around it here There's one cup, one more half cup. Okay. So we got a total of one and a half cups of the sugar, and I'm going to start blending this a bit, just stirring it. I want every bit of everything in there. I really do try to be a waste not person. I'm going to add in two large eggs. I have my farm fresh eggs that I buy. The chickens are molten for that fellow that sells them to me right now. So if I have them, I go ahead and crack them into a bowl. But whenever I'm doing these from the store, I just make sure I don't have any shell involved and I go from there. Okay. Move some of this stuff aside. My workspace is just a little bit tiny. So I'm going to mix the eggs and then I'm going to get my vanilla. Get this going. A teaspoon. Yes, one teaspoon. I always just use the lid. out of my way okay that's looking good so the next thing we add to this is half cup of dried cranberries and I've got them I bought them like in a little bulk container now I'm gonna gradually gradually add all this together and then I'm gonna go ahead and just blend by hand the cranberries and the chocolate chips Okay, I've got this pushed down. Just put it all in there and then I just pushed it down with a wooden spoon. And I've got parchment paper that's lining this. You could use foil if you wanted to. Or you could just use your pan and spray it with a cooking spray. Okay, so into the oven it goes. It's gonna be in 350 degrees for, let me see how many minutes. I was thinking it was 20, but I wanna be sure that I've got it exactly right for you. 18 to 21 minutes so when it comes out of the oven I'll show you then it'll be sitting for two hours to cool and then we'll get the topping on it or the icing here is the blondie part I've got a little bit of cooling left to do but while I'm doing that giving it the last bit of cooling I'm gonna go ahead and make the frosting for it when I'm done I'm just gonna Put the frosting on it and then topping and then I'm going to just lift it out by the corners. Hi everybody, I've got the blondie out. I call it the blondie because it is like making a blondie. I've got that out of the oven and it's cooling and I'll show you what that looks like. And I'm getting ready to melt like a half cup. It's a total cup, half cup of 
milk chocolate chips, and this is going to go into my mixer here. Half of it's gonna go in the mixer, and half of it I'm gonna drizzle across the top whenever I'm done. So this is getting ready to go in there, and I'm gonna start adding it. In here I have an eight ounce package of softened cream cheese that I just let sit at room temperature near my stove to get it kind of soft. So it's gonna be ready to start mixing. I'm gonna put this in and just in increments, I'm gonna start warming it up enough to melt it. And I'm gonna start adding one cup of powdered sugar to this. You want that pretty soft. You, I just, it, my, in my house today, it's warm here, unusually warm. And it's okay for me to go ahead and just use it at that. I didn't have to do any softening of it other than just room temperature. So I'm gonna add a little of this at a time. And let it mix. As I was digging through my cupboards, I found another package of white chocolate chips that still weren't chocolate chips. They were white morsels, but they were actually a Hershey's brand. So I'm using that for the topping. Whichever, whatever you use is fine. Now, in here, I grated, I eyeballed it. It's about a tablespoon of orange peel. So it's just orange zest. You don't want to get that white part of the orange because that's bitter. This smells so good, it's so fresh. Okay, this is, you can see the melted chocolate. So I'm gonna just drizzle this into this. So in here is the one block of cream cheese, softened. One cup, check and make sure I'm right. I'm doing multiple things at once today and I apologize to you all. Yep. One cup of powdered sugar and then the chocolate chips and I've got the orange zest and it really smells good. It'd probably be good just like that. So I'm gonna just, this is kinda hot. I'm gonna get one that really fits well for me. And then I've got a half a cup of cranberries and I'm gonna sprinkle these across the top of it. So this is just about ready to come out. I'm just gonna spread it on. I'm gonna ice it. I'm gonna show you this. Here we go. It's not a very good picture of it, is it? Okay, there's the brownie part. You see where I got me a little smidgen of it there? <laughs> I took a little bite of it. I wanted to see. Did this, I always like to sample things. That's my excuse. Okay, I've got the topping ready. I'm gonna spread it on this, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like, and then I'll, I'm gonna sprinkle the cranberries on top and do a little drizzling, but I think this is gonna cover it.